I figured I might as well make something a video that has a little more detail of what's going on here because I imagine there are some people that are practically clueless about how to go about this and maybe it's the first time they've done something like this I'm sure as hell not super experienced in it but I have a good understanding of it so there are seven screws on the back plate here one two three four five six seven take out those seven screws with a false small Phillips screwdriver and the back plate will pop off here's your two V-BIOS chips firmware chips when the card initially boots it boots off of or it reads the firmware from this one after boot it then switches over to anything that tries to read the firmware reads from this one so if you flash just this one then after Windows loads it tries to read this compares that to what your motherboard told it was in the slot so it's basically comparing this with this so if you only flashed one it'll say that's not the same device that was there for post and it won't want to initialize it it's the same firmware on both there might be some extra shit for whatever features the MI25 has over the WX9100 I'm pretty sure this FPGA here has something to do with this auto switching. Doesn't really matter. I used one of these CH341A USB programmer set up to where you can take a chip and put it right in there, flip the lever over, tighten it down, or it comes with this cable. Put it in there the right way. You can see uh, a red wire here, pin 1, and there's also some labeling It's kind of hard to see on the PCB right now, but pin 1, and then you see right down here, hard to see, but take my word for it, it tells you for a 24XX series chip, use this side of the socket, for a 25XX, use this side. And it shows a little notch like ICs often have designating where pin 1 is. Pin 1 goes that way. So when this goes in, you put it towards this side with pin 1 facing that way. Like so. Just clip it down. There you go. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, these tend to run the I.O. pins at 5 volts. There's a simple mod you can do. I'll link it in the description to set it up to run 3.3 volts. Most stuff you're going to mess with in a computer, you're not going to need 5 volts. Sometimes you need 1.8, and this thing came with a little adapter you throw in there that drops it down to 1.8. But this card, I just used 3.3 volts with this cable. Now again, red wire, pin 1, on this side, that way. And if you look out on the PCB, on this IC, there's a little arrow pointing towards this pin. That's pin 1. On this IC, there's another arrow pointing towards this corner, this pin. That's pin 1. Mine also seems to have a little white mark on here designating pin 1 for whatever reason. Also, if you get the same cheap one I got, the end will be kind of rounded and you won't have cl enough clearance to get it around this chip. So I took a grinder, sandpaper or file would also work, to shave this down to where it's more pointed so you can actually get in there. So again, red wire, pin one, pin one over here, squeeze it open, get it all the way down, get your face in there real good, make sure you got each little metal contact lined up. If I try really hard, I can get it to just stay on there on its own. But what I did when I flashed it is I just got it on there where everything was making contact, held it on there like this, and then clicked the buttons on the mouse to make the software do the thing, waited for it to finish, and then let it come off. That works. And again, for the other one, red wire pin one, 
goes this way. You have to just make sure you get it down in there. You have to touch the little solder balls that are barely sticking out. Good idea to always save your original firmware. Keep it handy in case you need it. Because you never know, sometimes there's some weird incompatibility shit that you might need to sort out. Just good practice to keep it. Flash one, flash the other. Then just put it all back together. Yeah. Backplate, put it on, put the seven screws in. Or, if you really don't need the backplate, leave it off. Install it in your computer. Install WX9100 drivers. No special bullshit to make the drivers cooperate. Oh, and I guess one other thing to uh, point out. Your mini display port is towards the bottom of the bracket. You see those little cross-section pieces here. You need to cut out two of them that are covering that. Some side cutters like this. Just get it in there. Snip it off. Try not to wrench on it to where you break the port or anything. And then just... If you have a DisplayPort monitor, mini DisplayPort to DisplayPort cable, I really should focus this. I'm too close to focus. Mini DisplayPort to DisplayPort or whatever your monitor has. I just went and got this, uh, I think it was HP Dell, excuse me, Dell G44DK. It works. I also had a, uh, in the first video, a $3 DisplayPort to HDMI adapter. That, uh, if I have that PCB here, you can see why I don't like that damn thing. For one, one of these pins here was just disconnected, so I was getting some artifacting on the screen. I didn't suspect GPU because I've seen that before with just a loose HDMI connection. But uh, also, those traces going from left to right here, that's just DisplayPort and then HDMI. These operate at different voltages. There should be a level shifter, but this is really cheap. It looks, it looks looks like they have a uh, the display data that tells your graphics card what resolution the monitor is. It looks like they at least have an IC that takes that and then drops it down to 3.3. I can't tell for sure exactly what's going on there because it, I can't see markings on that to look up a data sheet. And I also didn't bother checking what pins are what there. It's just garbage. The hell with it. I had active adapter I took the mini display port end off of that and just wired it up to this it worked but I was getting some weird flickering and uh, besides it seems like this active adapter compresses the image it looks like shit compared to this passive adapter and this passive adapter I've ripped it open it has a level shifting IC some ESD protection and whatnot I paid nine bucks for it on eBay I think the same seller had like a dozen more I'll probably just link that in the description too but uh, it's basically that simple. The hardest part is uh, the drivers for this thing. It seems like I tried what I thought was the same one that worked before and it didn't cooperate or I lost the original driver file. I'll link to the video where I got the drivers. There were two of them in there. I installed them both. It didn't work. I uninstall, reinstall, bash your head off of that, installing them in whatever order, uninstall, reinstall until it cooperates. You plug this thing in. Maybe at first it isn't recognized, unplug it, replug it back in, then maybe it'll work. Or maybe you'll get a different one of these with different firmware and it'll cooperate a lot better. I don't know. It's some random Chinese shit that I paid $15 for the kit for like a year ago. So, I don't plan on making an exact tutorial there. But I gave you enough information that just follow instructions for whatever specific part you get to get the drivers working. Connect it up that way. Oh, and I guess one thing I forgot is after you connect this, at least in the software I use, there's a detect IC because you need to tell it exactly what the hell you're programming for it to do it right. The model number on this was, uh, well it doesn't matter. The software didn't pick the exact same model number, but it worked. I think like the first six digits were right and then the last couple, which is just some variation if you're not familiar with ICs, there's a lot of things where they work basically exactly the same, but the last few numbers or last few digits are something like variations in rated temperature range and things like that. Not a huge deal. And again, 
you're using a USB programmer so if the card just doesn't work or you the flash fails and you flash something corrupted try again flash it until it's on there and then just you're good you don't have to worry about bricking it probably a good idea to after you flash it read it back and maybe use some kind of hex editor compare tool to compare what you read with the same file that you tried to put on it and make sure they're the same if you're really worried about potentially like it is poten technically possible to flash something on here that would jack the voltage up and then fry it but if you compare what you flashed on there with the original file that you tried to flash on there and they are the same you should be good again the file that I used just like in the last video I'm going to link that in the description if you have any questions check the description if there's not an answer there I will try to answer your question hope this helped I probably could have made it shorter more concise but this is very unscripted impromptu peace